Hello, I'm Dawn Durham, and welcome to Patent Pod. We're here at the Patent Harrisburg office, where we have a cohort of professionals going through to working towards their computer science certification. Joining me today is Mark Stalick, a professor from Carnegie Mellon University. Hi, Mark. Thanks for being here today with us. Hi, Don. Great to be here with you. So talk to me a little bit about why we need our teachers to be certified in computer science, especially thinking about we already have computer science going on in our classrooms today. So certification allows the state to say, here's the things that you need to be able to know in order to be able to teach a rigorous mm -hmm. computer science course. So, and it's a standard, right? Mm -hmm. But there are also standards for courses. So certification is going to align with standards for computer science courses so that the teachers can then say, I've been certified, I know this material, I can now teach in this 7 through 12 space. So this certification really permits us to have a standardized understanding of what computer science is and really pushing our students to be more challenged in this area. I, I think I would frame it this way, that the computer science certification establishes a baseline mm. for the minimum you need to know in order to be able to effectively teach the content right, of computer science in grades 7 through 12. Um, it is not a like result of taking a computer science major or master's degree. Sure, right? it, sure. is, it is a, a minimum standard, right? Not the final place where we want our teachers to be. Mm -hmm. We hope that they would get certified and maybe do additional professional development as they do in other disciplines. Sure. How does this benefit the students in our school districts? So hopefully if we get more teachers certified mm -hmm. and then we, we can have more rigorous computer science courses offered in the schools, then the students will get a better computer science experience than the one that they perhaps have now. Mm -hmm. I can elaborate that on a little bit. The old certification for computer science was the BCIT certification and that involves business and computing and information mm -hmm. technology. But the emphasis there was more on um, what I would call older style technology, mm -hmm. older style sure. equipment, right? Um, and so what we're looking for now is moving from courses that mostly taught Word and Excel, which are valuable tools, sure. but aren't really computer science. And there's a big difference, as we now know, between productivity tools and applications, mm -hmm. right? And so we want students to be able to think about not just using applications, like you know Word and Excel, mm -hmm. but writing little, little apps, okay? And so computer science is about understanding the plethora of topics that are in computer science, programming, right? Um, theoretical computer science, trying to figure out what the impacts of computer science are in the world, right? Um, we have a debate going on right now in Pennsylvania about electronic voting. Yes, and yes. It turns out that e-voting is very much related to computer science topics, mm -hmm. right? And so getting students more literate in computer science, mm -hmm. getting students who really like it to be able to do more with computer science right, is what the benefit is I think in terms of being a 21st century student and then growing into a 21st century adult. So you think about that where it used to be very broad and encompassing a lot of topics but now we can really get a certification in a teacher who's very honed in and streamlined and, and really specific about computer science and being more um, and encouraging students to be more computer science literate and to take those skills and apply them in the real world as right. a 21st student. Right but I think I think it was not just about breath it was also about the content. The BCIT exam, the certification mm -hmm. exam, really had a very minimum amount of computer science, right? It really was a very generic exam, very mm -hmm. non-specific to computer science. So this is not about like making a better BCIT. This is about saying, no, BCIT really wasn't about computer science, right? And yeah. to be fair, there are a lot of really good teachers who have BCIT oh, cert yes. who are doing a wonderful do job teaching real computer science courses, okay? But we also have teachers who were teaching BCI what I would call BCIT courses, mm -hmm. which aren't really computer science courses. Those courses may still have value, but they're just not computer science courses, right? Sure. So what sure. we'd like to see is more of the computer science courses offered, both as a gateway perhaps into future majors for students, but also as a way, as I said earlier, of creating 21st century literate student populations. This is a very exciting path for us to be on, especially in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You know, this group right here of professionals that are working towards this certification is really going to propel um, our state forward in computer science and moving our students forward to be um, computer science literate and moving from being a student to adults and, and part of the working force in the, in the world. So we're very excited about that. Oh, absolutely. So, so in Pennsylvania, I think I heard this morning that there were 18,000 open computer science wow. slash software engineering jobs right mm -hmm. in the Commonwealth. Like, let alone what that looks like nationally. Yeah, right? Yeah. The demand is clearly there. Right. And I think students have an inherent interest in technology. I mean, mm -hmm. my, my grandson, who's six years 
old, right, is more adept with my yeah. iPhone, yes. I think, sometimes <laughs> than I am, okay? Yep. But again, that's from a use perspective. But that use should drive, in some senses, curiosity, mm -hmm. which should drive interest, right? Um, and so I think there will be some students who will become very interested in the underpinnings and maybe think about creating their own applications, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there will also be students who will now understand more about how and why this thing works and what you should be thinking about. Like when, when you download an app on your phone and the app says, I need permission to access, um, and I just did this with a currency conversion app. <laughs> I need permission to access your contacts, your uh. pictures. And it's like, no you don't, you're a currency. Currency conversion. <laughs> you don't app, need my right? contacts. This is yes. absurd. So rather than just blithely saying, sure, mm -hmm. right, we want students to be more aware of what some of those choices hmm. entail and what they mean in particular for them. That's really that's really exciting and fascinating work. So I so appreciate the time that you're spending here at Patton Harrisburg office to help these individuals move forward so that they can um, go ahead and, and continue the work in this. I thank you so much for that. Uh, we, you know, we really want to inspire others in the field to grow professionally mm -hmm. in all fields, right? right? Do you have any advice for those in the field who are watching or listening today that we could offer to them? So I think in the main, if you've been teaching computer science courses and you find them you know, interesting and fulfilling, mm -hmm. right, you should, you should have a pretty easy job of getting your certification and then as the state changes the, the course codes, right, sure. being able to offer some more of these more computer science related courses. Probably some of which you're already doing, mm -hmm. but now there's going to be a formal you know, PIMS label for this, right, in, mm -hmm. in all the you know, school technology. Um, but for, for teachers who maybe have been on the edges of this, you know, like you're an art teacher and you'd like to do you know, computational art, yeah. right? So maybe you don't need the CS cert, but maybe you want to find out more about computing that could help you do digital art. Well, you can come to one of these trainings, right, and find out something right. about computing, then you can decide whether or not you want the cert. Right? You, you're, we're going to see more computing in more courses. It is the 21st century tool, right? Mm -hmm. We don't dissect too many things anymore. I mean, we do a little bit, but we do a lot of simulation in biology mm -hmm. electronically, right? It's a digital simulation, right? Sure, so again, yeah. no matter your major, right, we want you as a student to be exposed to this. And as teachers, I think we'd like our teachers to both be more computer science literate and we'd hope that some number of teachers, hopefully a large number of teachers, would go after the certification to be able to teach computer science courses. Right? Because that's our real our real problem in this and most states is we don't have right, that many certified computer science teachers. Sure. Right? And this is a first cohort toward that path. Um, but we want to see this grow you know, immensely so that we know what we're doing in the classroom. The students benefit from the teachers knowing what they're doing in the classroom. Right? And then this becomes hopefully a ball that, that snowballs. So if I have teachers out there, administrators or students who are listening, you know, computer science isn't the only path. There's other avenues in which case, you know, if, you're, uh, uh, you know, if your focus is on literacy or art mm -hmm. or um, Spanish or, you know, whatever, phys ed. But if you really want to dig in a little bit more and have that more knowledge, go for it. Go well, and reach out. Sure. And I think another way to do that is, you know, think when we start having a computer science certified teacher in every school, right? Well, then the art teacher has someone they can go talk yeah. to on campus, yeah. right, about, well, I want to do this. I've heard about this thing. Can you help me figure out how to bring that into my classroom, right? I think, you know, having these certified teachers gives us opportunities not just in discipline, as you've mm -hmm. noted, right, but also across Wide disciplines variety. within the school. Right? I think that's very exciting. So cool. thank you so much for hey, talking with welcome. us today. We appreciate it, Mark. Okay. Thank you to all of you in the field. You inspire educational growth in your students every day. A special thank you to John Ragsdale for producing this podcast. We'll see you next time on Patent Pod.